Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Lisa and today we are doing block number three of our Dream, Hope and Love mystery quilt. Let's take a look at block number three. As we get started this week, I just want to let you know this is a free pattern. Block number three is totally free and I have a link to my Dropbox in the description box below this video. If you have problems locating your description box, I've heard from several of you and uh, it's very difficult to find your description box on the type of device that you are using. Look down on the right right below this video you should see a little gray arrow if you're on a mobile device click on that little tiny gray arrow it's very easy to miss but when you click on that it's going to open up a bunch of information below this video that's the description box if you're on some type of pc uh, look underneath of the title of the video and you should see some information there and a little icon that says show more it might be located towards the middle of your screen or somewhere underneath of the title. It, it varies from uh, device to device. And so I just want to try and make it a little bit easier for you to find the link for this pattern. Uh, I'm going to also post some links on my Facebook. So you can join me over at Lisa Cape and Quilts and scroll through. Uh, it should be relatively close to the top. Uh, I'll have links to the cover page, block one, block two, and this week's block, block, num block number three. <laughs> you might have to scroll down to find it depending on how many posts get uploaded to my Facebook. So as we open up the binder for week number three, let's just revisit the cat block. This was week number two. I have enjoyed seeing your cats. I think it's one of the highlights of my day is hearing from all of you and seeing your work and it's a lot of fun to get your pictures and talk about your your block for the week if you'd like to post a picture of your uh, finished blocks you can join me over on Facebook scroll down until you see the block that I've posted and in the comment section feel free to post your pictures and um, join along with us there here we are block number three Block number three is called Hope, and it is an applique and paper paper piecing block. <laughs> it's going to be in two parts. We're going to do applique in this section and paper piecing in this section, and then join it together. This block, uh, when it's finished, measures 16 and a half inches wide and 18 and a half inches long. So let's go ahead and get started with this pattern. I have a uh, a few tips that's going to help you out and today we're going to be focusing on the uh, paper paper piecing <laughs> portion of this block as we get started today if you're mapping along with us somewhere in your pattern you'll find this little guy it's a replica block number three go ahead and cut that out and we're going to talk about the placement it is very, very simple this week. If you take the right edge of your Hope block and then align it with the right edge of your Dresden block and place block number three directly underneath of block number one, just like that, and tape it into place, this is what it should look like. You should have two empty squares right next to your Hope block but are still underneath of your Dresden. So, just like that. And so, no huge reveal this week, but we are starting to come together. Let's take a look at our pattern. Of course, we have our cover sheet and applique instructions. We have two pages of applique templates. I tried to fit them all on one page. Because of the little swirly on the H, I could not get them all to fit, so I broke them up into two pages. They have been mirror imaged, and so if you're using a fusible to do your applique, you do not have to reverse and trace your template. 
it has already been reversed for you. So you're ready to go ahead and get started with that part. You have two pages that are your fabric map. The instructions say to cut one out on the dotted line and then paste it directly to your other sheet. Let me show you what that looks like. And this is going to be your applique template. We're going to talk about this in just a second. The fabric requirements for this week's block. For the background of your applique part of this block, you'll need uh, a fabric that measures 10 and a half inches wide and 18 and a half inches long. And then you'll need scraps. And you'll need your scraps uh, slightly larger than all of your applique pieces. So a little bit bigger than each one of your letters. And you'll need scrap fabrics that are larger than each position on your fabric map. So let's say we're doing number eight. You'll need your fabric to extend beyond all of the lines and the edges of piece number eight. So on and so on. <laughs> what I suggest for this block is to go ahead and prepare your background for the applique portion of this block and do that part of the block and set it aside. That uh, I'm thinking is going to be the easiest part of this block. So go ahead and get this part done. You can see I've done this one. I did a simple zigzag stitch to sew all of my applique down this week. And uh, so that portion is done. Once you have all of this done, Go ahead and set that aside and today we're going to focus on the paper piecing. I know that I have several viewers who have just started doing uh, paper piecing and are still relatively new and I'm assuming that uh, many of you watching have just started quilting and have never attempted paper piecing. And so I'm going to show you my favorite way to do it. Of course there is no right and wrong way to do it and if this way looks like something that does not look fun to you, then I do suggest finding other ways. There's several ways to do it. So I'm just going to show you my favorite way today. So prepare your templates, prepare the hope part of your block, and we're going to move on to the paper piecing. I'm thinking that I'm going to have to rearrange my little sewing layout so it's more conducive to showing you easily step by step. Before we do that, I want to show you how to prepare your fabric map. All right, we are going to just revisit the fabric map for just a second because I want to talk to you about print settings. <laughs> now, when I designed this, I designed it in my software true to size. However, what I've come to realize in pattern design is that no matter how exact I get in the software, my print settings are always slightly different. And I'm assuming that on your computer, it varies as well. Matter of fact, I think that each printer and computer and software you use for printing out your patterns they all do their own little thing. <laughs> and so in dealing with that, I want to show you just a few things. And you know what? I've realized that uh, the reason it does that is because it allows for the printer margins to feed your paper through the printer. No matter what, even if you were to make a design that goes from edge to edge, exactly, it's going to shrink your image because when the paper feeds through the printer, it has little roller things and it needs some space on the side to roll the paper through. So it will not ever print on a certain portion of the left and right side of the paper. <laughs> it just won't. So let's take a look at my fabric map that I've pasted together. Now when I printed mine out, it printed exactly perfect six and a half inches wide. However, when I taped it together, this was exactly on the line here, but to this line it did not measure 18 and a half inches long. I like to use my fabric map as an actual template 
so that when I am done with all of my piece work, I can flip this over and use the paper as a guide to trim my portion of the block. So, if when you tape your two pieces together and you want to do as I do, cut it out on the lines and use this as an actual trimming guide, check your side measurements from side to side and if that measures six and a half inches, wonderful. Trim it exactly on the lines. If it falls a little bit short, then starting from the center, measure out six and a half inches and make yourself two new lines and cut out on those lines. Mine, again, m printed short. And so I had to add about half an inch and where to add length would be underneath of your first position. The reason I say that is because, see at the top of this, you have two little lines that extend past the point of your triangle that is to allow for your seam allowance. So if you have to add any length to your template, add it to the bottom of block or piece number one because it's not really going to matter if we cut any of this bottom of the triangle off. So there we go. I'm hoping that's not too, too confusing. <laughs> But I like to go ahead and cut it out on the lines. And so this measures six and a half inches wide, 18 and a half inches long, and it's going to give me an exact piece to sew to our hope applique portion of the block. Let me just show you what that's going to look like. Here we are. <laughs> now, I mentioned before I'm doing a three quilts, and so. Um, this was my second attempt at this block. You can see that this middle triangle, the point is exactly spot on and perfect. This bottom one, I seem to struggle with. <laughs> uh, the very tip of the triangle is missing. However, I think it's lovely. And so if you are coming up and not exactly getting that point spot on, do not be discouraged. <laughs> this very top one is exactly what I was just showing you. That's going to be the seam allowance. And so when we piece this block to the one above it, uh, this part will be uh, in the seam allowance. So there is our finished applique piece and I'm going to show you this step by step. Let me go ahead and rearrange everything and we're going to go ahead and start sewing. My very first tip for doing paper piecing in this manner that I'm going to show you today is once you have your fabric map all pasted together and cut out true to size, pre-fold your paper on all of the sewing lines. You don't have to pre-fold on this dotted line. That's just uh, a reference point to tape the paper together. But all of the solid lines, go ahead and pre-fold your map directly on the line. Just like that, and just like that, and that. So for all of the solid lines, pre-fold, and that just helps in the aid, uh, making it a lot easier to sew your seams when you take this with your fabric to the sewing machine. And here is my second tip. And this tip really just helps reduce the amount of fabric that is wasted while we're doing the paper piecing. Uh, you can see I have a large triangle here. I just cut out a square that was larger than my triangle. For these pieces, I just cut a strip of fabric that was wider than the piece itself. And then I made myself two templates just like this. I took a piece of paper, laid it over top of my fabric map, and drew on the line the actual position of that piece. You can see here I've marked this piece three, six, and nine, just like that. So it's the same for all of those pieces. And then when I cut it out, I added about half an inch all the way around. I did the same exact thing for these pieces. 
So, when I am cutting out the fabric scraps to use in my positions when sewing, I can just take this and cut out a scrap fabric that is slightly larger than the position it's going to go in. And that's going to help reduce the amount of waste in your fabric stash. As we get started, I want to bring you in at this angle so you can see the correct placement of your fabrics on your position. Always start with position number one and go in numerical order of your template. So, the first thing to keep in mind is make sure to place your fabric scrap so that at least a quarter of an inch hangs over each one of your sewing lines. And your sewing lines are the solid line on your template. So, the first thing that I like to do is I bring in a glue stick and this is just an Elmer's washable school glue stick. And don't worry, uh, we're going to heat set this. It's going to dry the glue, but it's going to hold our fabric in position as we manipulate all of the pieces. But in the end, everything lifts off of your template very easily, and you can reuse this template. I just fold it up and put it with the rest of my pattern for next time. So the first thing I do is place some glue just inside that position. I stay away from the lines, but just enough glue that's going to really hold that fabric in place. Now I've made sure to extend past this solid line here. I'm past all of the edges on my fabric map, and I am past the bottom of my paper where I had to extend to add some length. So that position is good. I'm just going to heat set that really quick and dry that glue. Ooh, my iron is too hot for this fabric. I don't want to melt my clothing. <laughs> and so there we go. Now the first thing I want to do, I you could have made just like I made these position uh, templates. You could make one for your triangle as well. It's just when I was going through and picking out all my fabrics, I just cut these squares. But you could make a triangle piece that helps you as well. I want to go ahead and trim off my extra before we get started. I'm just going to move this smaller mat in. Trying to find a, a good way to set everything up to do this is one of my hardest parts of making these videos. <laughs> now, remember when I said to fold your fabric map? This is where it's going to come in really handy because there's no guesswork. Fold back your position number two. That's the very next fabric that we're going to add. And a trim away to a quarter of an inch using the edge of your paper as your guide. So you're going to give yourself a quarter inch seam allowance, just like that. So now I have that quarter inch just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for position number three as well. The air conditioning <laughs> blows all of my papers around. Okay, we're going to line that up with the folded edge of our paper giving ourselves a quarter inch seam and just like that we have trimmed piece number one. Now we are ready to add piece number two. So I have my little template. I have my fabric scrap. And this does not have to be exact. It will be exact when you are finished sewing. Ooh, strings. This angle is not good for me. <laughs> so, there we go. Now, 
This was always the confusing part for me. Position number two is just like this. So just like that. And now we are flipping the right sides together just like this. The important thing to remember here is see how I have fabric that extends past this sewing line? Make sure piece number two also extends past that sewing line and past the edge of your paper. We want to make sure that all of that fits into our block, just like that. Now you can pin this in place uh, if that helps you. But what I do now is fold that map again just like that holding these two pieces together and bring it to the machine just like this we're going to sew right next to the edge of this paper fold a seam from the edge of our fabric to the end of our fabric I will bring you to the sewing machine and I'll show you this uh, the one time I don't think I need to keep moving you back and forth but I'll show you what that looks like on the sewing machine as we sew this seam. Here we are at the sewing machine. I have my machine settings set to just a straight stitch and the length is set at 2.5 and we're ready to go ahead and get started. When bringing your fabric and your map over, always make sure that your fabric is on the bed of your machine and your uh, paper map is facing up and that way you can see the folded line on your map and that gives you the reference of exactly where to sew. I'm going to slide this right in and lower the needle just above that solid line on my map. There's no need to backstitch because that's going to be included in one of the seams and so that will be secure. And next we are just sewing a straight line. My needle is right next to this paper fold and we're just going to be straight all the way down. It's very hard to do from this angle. <laughs> Whoa, I'm going to just try and keep it as straight as I can, sewing from the angle that I'm sitting, staying right next to that fold on my paper. All the way down. Once you're done, We will show you what that looks like. So, yay, I stayed pretty straight from the angle I'm sitting. <laughs> so your stitches, again, are right next to the paper fold and not on the paper. And we're ready to open the seam up. After showing you how to sew right next to this paper seam, I don't think I'll need to keep bringing you back and forth, so we're just going to work from this angle from here on out. Our first seam has been sewn and we're ready to open this up, just like that. I take a little bit of glue and put that right into position number two. This is going to hold it in place as we finish all of our pieces. And now I'm just going to finger press that into place just like that. Now look how perfect that seam is. I'm just going to heat set that glue and press that seam all at one time and that just takes a second. Now you can clearly see looking at this that fabric 2 when opened up extends past our sewing line and that is perfect. It also extends past the edges of our fabric map. So when we're all done, we're going to trim exactly to our paper and give us the perfect size for this piece. We're ready to add piece number three. So this is my little template for piece number three and I can cut that fabric out. 
it's going to come in just like this. Again, this is just a tip. It's not written in the instructions to do this. This is just what I like to do to help reduce in the waste of all of my scraps. So just like that, a rough cut of that position. We'll bring this mat back in. Place it just like it would be if it was finished and then turn right sides facing each other and make sure, again, that the top goes past this line and the bottom extends past our map. And just like that, I'm going to fold my map. And so now it looks like this. And I'm going to sew a seam from edge to edge for piece number three. And I'll do that real quick. I know I'm off camera. It's going to take just a second. So there's my seam. Let's open our map back up flat. Take some glue in position number three. And we will open this up and just do a finger press. Now my goal on this one is to not lose my little point. I think I was folding my map not exactly on the line on my other blocks and so I'm gonna pay close attention this next time and we're gonna see if I can't get that point to be exactly perfect we'll see <laughs> so I've just heat set that and that's nice and dry the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and trim everything to a quarter of an inch on this next sewing line. So the sewing line for number four, we're gonna trim this seam allowance. And I think, see all the different folds here? I think that's why I was losing my point. I was not folding it right on the line. <laughs> so we're gonna try to be more careful this time. And get that Point. So I'm going to go ahead and trim to a quarter of an inch all of this extra here. And if, if you use the little templates that I showed you, you should not have a lot of extra fabric to trim off. We're hoping not to lose this little point. <laughs> I'm thinking that we're going to have it this time. All right, I'm going to take my fabric for piece number four, just like this, and fold it down right sides together, and line it up with our trimmed quarter inch, and make sure that it, your fabric extends past the edge of your fabric map. Fold your map. It should look like this now. And bring that to the sewing machine just like this. I'm going to do that off camera for just a second. And we are back. So 
So we're going to open up piece number four and reveal this point. And I'm hoping that this time I finally got it right. Let's go ahead and put some glue into position number four. Yes, look at that. I'm going to finger press this into place. And we're going to heat set that. And I did not lose my point this time. So I guess the third time is the charm. <laughs> I'm just going to heat set that glue and press my seam. Just like that. I finally did it. Yay. I am so pleased with myself. <laughs> so at this point, we're ready to, once again, trim position number four just like we did with position number one. At this point we are just repeating all of those steps for these uh, remaining pieces and so I think that I will bring you along because again I do have a lot of new quilters and people that have not done paper piecing yet so I want you to see this. However I will speed this up and uh, so we're not sitting here for a long, long time. <laughs> but it's the same steps, just repeated. And remember to go in numerical order. Even though I'm speeding this part of the block up, it is still 6 minutes and 43 seconds long. And I'm really hoping that the fast motion doesn't make you too queasy. I really wanted to include everything so that you see the whole process. But I'm trying to save some time on this video. Here I am just trimming off the extra to a quarter inch. And getting ready to add pieces number five and six. I do think that it would really save some time if you pre-cut all of your pieces before you start sewing instead of cutting them out as you go like I'm doing here. Again we just align right sides together making sure the fabric extends past all of your sewing lines and the edge of your map. And I'm going to sew this and I will be right back. <laughs> I am not an expert video maker and so turning on and off the camera and moving you around I tried to eliminate a lot of that and so when I sew my seams I promise I will be right back. Now we're just going to put some glue in position number five, open the fabric, finger press and then set our seams with the iron and then move on to position number six. So you can see it's the same motions repeated through the whole process of sewing this part of the block. We will bring that to the machine. And I'm coming right back. <laughs> I do think in future videos where I am doing a paper pieced portion of a block that uh, I can refer people back to this video and so maybe the future videos won't take so long because uh, we're showing how to do the paper piecing step by step in this video. And so maybe we can focus on other things in future blocks and hopefully speed the whole video up a little bit. <laughs> My hope is that really, even if you've never done paper piecing, that at the end of this video, you get the idea of the process. And certainly, I learn by hands-on experience. And so you can view this video and then sit down with your fabrics and your patterns 
and do them a few times. And after repeating the process with your hands on the fabric itself, you will quickly develop uh, a skill and retain the information and learn how to do the paper piecing. We're going to bring the cutting mat back and I'm going to trim this last triangle up at the top. And you can see, because we've pre-folded the fabric map, it is a lot easier. <laughs> If you try to fold the fabric map as you're going along the first time you do this, uh, it is a little bit more difficult. So I, I'm glad that uh, I gave you that tip because it really does help in the long run. Here I've decided <laughs> to come in with a heat erase pen and just mark my positions and uh, cut the pieces out that way. The markings disappear when I touch them with my iron and so I'm not worried about them staying on my quilt block. I do think the rotary cutter would be much faster and easier to cut out your pieces versus using scissors like I'm doing in this video. <laughs> so there's my piece number eight and nine ready to go. Bring that to the sewing machine and sew the seam. So you can see there's a lot of back and forth, cutting mat, pressing, adding your next piece, sewing, pressing, cutting mat. <laughs> that would be a lot of back and forth for the camera. So I'm just hoping that this style of video is okay. even though I go missing for a second while I'm at the sewing machine. I think maybe if I had a video camera crew, then my videos would be a lot more easier to watch. <laughs> Harlan used to shoot my videos for me in the very beginning, but I would have to wait for him to have time enough set aside to do my videos and so it would be a long time in between my videos and being able to post them on YouTube. So we're going with my video shooting skills which sometimes leaves a lot to be desired but I think you get the process. I think that this shows how everything goes. And there is our last piece and we're just going to heat set that seam. As we come back and slow everything down, I just want to say I hope that does not make you too seasick when I speed up the videos. I want to be able to show you the whole process and I don't want to consume all day I know your time is very valuable, so I try to keep a, a shorter video as I can and yet still show you everything. And so the dilemma of trying to do that is very hard. So sometimes I will speed up the video and I'm just hoping that you see everything without making you queasy. <laughs> so we are all done with our piecing. I am very pleased with my third attempt at this uh, block. And so I do encourage you if you're not happy it just takes some practice and even if your points are not perfect like let's just compare my two pieces uh, you can't see that this is the one we just did together and all my points are fantastic this was my second attempt and I lost my point here but you know what I still love this piece and it is going in my quilt and I am completely happy with that. So we are almost done with today's video. Let me show you the beauty of using the paper map. We're ready to trim all of the extra off of everything we pieced together. And now it is as simple as 
matching our ruler up to the edge of our paper and trimming everything that hangs off the side. There's no guesswork of trying to line things up on your cutting mat and measure. We are just simply lining up with the paper and trimming everything away. Just like that. Like that. Our third trim. And then our last one at the very bottom. Just like that. And so it is as easy as just giving a couple little tugs. If you did not sew through the paper like I did on this little corner. <laughs> going to lift off the paper like that and just like that we have a perfect paper pieced block I love that like I said I think for me the third time was the charm and just to let you know, we are all in different stages of our quilting and sewing. And even someone like me who has been sewing since I was uh, 12 and making quilts since 1998, 99, I still make mistakes and I include them in my quilts and that is fine. So it does not have to be perfect and sometimes it just takes a, uh, some practice and sometimes make a couple blocks and use the best one. <laughs> so we have our paper pieced part of the block finished and to complete this block we bring in our applique piece just like this and we're going to do right sides together on the left side of our hope block just like that and we're going to sew a seam right here with a quarter inch seam allowance we'll press that open and at the end this will be our finished block Ta-da! <laughs> so i hope that you enjoy this block and i hope that you have learned something new with the paper piecing and I hope that you do not get discouraged if your block does not come out perfect. Mine is not perfect and I still love it. I also hope that I've shown some tips that help you out with the construction of your block this week. I would love to see your pictures. I just created a new group within my Facebook page. So if you head over to Lisa Cape and Quilts, you will see a little icon that says visit group. You can join our group there and there it's very easy to share your pictures of your blocks for your mystery quilt. But on that group, I also encourage you to show whatever you're working on. It does not have to be my patterns or the mystery quilt. Uh, I encourage you to share your accomplished finished pieces, your quilts, projects that you're working on currently uh, I hope that it stays a very helpful and encouraging group. And so if you are working on a project and you have questions, take a picture and post it over there. We have so many talented artists that might be able to help you out 
and give you some input or advice on how to finish your project or help you through questions that you have. And so that's really my hope with that group uh, is that it's a lot easier to share your works and your pictures uh, within that group. I'm also going to post a picture of my finished block on my page, Lisa Cape and Quilts, and within that post, you can also post your pictures in the comment section there as well. So, I have all of my templates that I made and my fabric map. I'm going to save this as part of my pattern and just put that right in the sleeve of this block. And so I have it for future blocks down the road if I ever want to make this quilt again. And I have had a lot of fun. If you have questions about this block or any of the other previous blocks we've done, feel free to comment in the section below this video and I will try to be as timely as I can to answer your questions. Again, you can also join me on Lisa, at Lisa Cape and Quilts on Facebook. And if you don't do Facebook, I will have a link to my Etsy store in the description box. And you can join me there and send your questions through Etsy. And so I'm hoping that's several different ways that you can contact me if you have questions. Again, I would love to see your block. And I hope that you have a fantastic week.